Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborn, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Tuesday, August 8th, 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. Sometimes it just takes a while after the close to get everything together for these videos, but we strive to produce the best most up-to-date information, most accurate information for you, taking a look under the hood of what's going on with the market. We're not the, we're not the salesman, we're the service department that uh, takes a look at uh, what's going on with the engine. That's your portfolio, the engine. Anybody can sell you a stock, but as William O'Neill is fond of saying, anybody can get you in, but who's going to get you out? We protect the downside here at Revere. Participate in the upside. Protect the downside. Growtection is our flagship portfolio. Enough blabbering. Let's get right into it. State of the market. We are in an uptrend. Short-term caution as we're below the 21-day exponential moving average. You can see on the trend gauge over here, we've got leadership marked neutral, uh, but some improvement today. I put the green arrow on yesterday, and despite the red close today, there were some Reasons to be optimistic, I'll go into them uh, in a moment. Short term, also showing neutral, and things got worse from an index standpoint. We now have four of the five indexes below their 21-day moving average, only the Dow maintaining a positive posture versus the short-term 21. All five of the major indexes above their 50-day moving average, that's our medium-term indicator, and also our long-term indicator, the 200-day moving average. Remember, we invest across three time frames. Here at Revere, we want to be focused on the best stocks and the best sectors when the short-term wind is at our back, which it isn't right now, but it has. We've felt some breezes at our back each of the last two afternoons, and I'll describe it when we get in uh, to the charts. But what happened today? Red close, but afternoon buying once again. Always good when you've got a red close, but some optimism. Uh, RG8, this is our eight ETF, eight growth ETF composite, down eight tenths of a percent. S&P, gap down six tenths. Overnight, what happened was uh, terrible import-export data out of China. And then uh, Moody's, another one of the ratings agency, uh, downgraded a bunch of the regional banks. So the China news hit commodities. The Moody's News hit financials, and the result was a gap down, but we put in the low within 45 minutes, and that's always a good sign. And when you look at the intraday charts, you'll see what I'm talking about. So we opened down six tenths on the S&P, uh, worked our way back to down four tenths. NASDAQ 100 down 0 0.85, Dow down 0 0.45, mid caps down nine tenths, Russell 2000 small caps down six tenths. Global 6040 stock and bond down 0.16% bonds uh, with a strong day today. Bond prices up, meaning yields down. Yields down, uh, that's good for stocks, despite the red uh, numbers on the day. In-house protection, at the close, we were down 0.32%. Then SMCI, one of our holdings, we were down, we had been booking profits uh, along the way in this, we were down to just a very small position, but it gapped down on earnings below the 21. We took it out after hours, closed that position out. Uh, several, really some nice gains, 20, 30, 40% as on our multiple buys uh, on this one. Never, never was an overly large position because of how volatile it is with an ATR of about 6% a day, uh, but uh, We'll take gains that are five times what's going on in the market uh, anytime, and that's one of the one of the metrics that we focus on. We only want to buy something that we think is going to perform double what the S and P can for, perform. Otherwise, we can just put our money in SSO and eliminate single stock risk. Risk. So uh, we'll hit the tail of the tape in charts of interest. Let's get right into it. Here's the S and P 500. And I'm going to bring in Thinkorswim here so you can see uh, what my reason for optimism is. This is a daily chart, a uh, three-month daily chart of the S&P 500. And this 
is a hammer candle. Uh, what we did was gap down. Hammers are uh, a signal that selling uh, has exhausted at least for this day uh, when the candle, or at least for the time period that the uh, candle is being developed for. Let's take a look at a five minute chart here and you can see here's the gap down. Here's the waterfall selling, basically bottomed 1015, a little bit of a bounce, mild undercut, like one point below there. And then look at the buying coming in. And why am I excited about this buying? Well, was it that strong? Well, I did mention yesterday, let me bring up the QQQ. Well, all right, we'll look at this. I want you to note how this all throughout this trend up in the afternoon, we couldn't get anywhere below 70 on uh, the stochastic. This is just constant buying coming in every time uh, it tried to sell off, buyers showed up. Let's go to the NASDAQ 100 very quickly because I noticed this yesterday while I was holding that QID inverse that I kept waiting for a whoosh down to get out of it that it never came because we could never get below 60% on the NASDAQ 100 uh, five minute stochastic yesterday. This is underlying strength. It's very common on a five minute chart to see it go in waves up and down, up and down. But when it stays in the upper part or the upper bottom, or upper bottom, in the upper part or the lower part, it signifies either strength or weakness. You can see the buying, very clear buying, both yesterday afternoon uh, and uh, the afternoon uh, and today uh, after lunchtime. So we look under the hood here. We don't just look at the final numbers. One other thing, and, and this is a positive sign, I pointed out yesterday that this is a reasonable area for a bounce. Well, we went a little bit lower today. Uh, on the NASDAQ, but again, the bounce came in. You can see the strength in the afternoon each of the last two days. I'm not guaranteeing tomorrow's gonna be an update. We could undo it all, but what we do is look for signals, both on the buy and the sell side, that uh, the dip is being bought. There are a lot of portfolio managers out there who bought into the negative uh, macro that we were supposed to have a terrible recession that it's August now and the recession hasn't hit and um, they're lagging for uh, for the year. And the only way to rectify lagging is to buy the dip. Um, you can see here this 4460 area. Again, another re very reasonable spot, reasonable spot for us to stop going down and bounce. Uh, the hammer at least tells you that for today, that's an inflection point. The sellers have uh, dried up for today. Again, I didn't. Yesterday, when I saw the selling, I certainly didn't think Moody's was going to downgrade or China import/export data was going to come in terrible, and we were going to gap, gap down uh, on banks and commodities. But let's take a look at banks and commodities very quickly. Here's KRE, terrible gap down. But what do you see on a five-minute chart here? We gap down, and then buyers came in. Let's go to commodities. I'm going to go to what we own to play oils, NRGU. Uh, buyers, right from the first 30 minutes, uh, NRGU actually closed positive on the day again and put in a hammer. Uh, so oils were bought, financials were bought after new negative news came out that could have sent them lower, but it didn't send them lower. Buyers came in and um, they came in on the NASDAQ 100. You can see the five minute uh, here, as I said, not as strong as the S&P was, but that's, there's a different story uh, for why the NASDAQ was weak today. And I'll get into that when I go to the tail of the tape, but also note where we bounced. NASDAQ 100, just barely above the 50 day. If you're an O'Neill weekly chart guy, we bounced right at the 10 week moving average. Let's look at the S&P 500 on the weekly chart just above the 10 week moving average. Again, a very normal spot to bounce. And when you factor in the different time frames, it's not only the moving averages, it's like I said, it's uh, support, double level of support because this was the former breakout area back here from July 12th. So yes, despite um, the negative close, I see some reason uh, for optimism. I didn't see anything else in the 21 over 21. Basically, you see this candle 
forming all over the place today on charts, a hammer. Uh, you gap down and you put in the lows quickly and you close near the high of the day. Bounce at the 21 day moving average. That's the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And again, note the relative strength continuing on the Dow as the NASDAQ 100 has been weakening. But has it been weakening? I was pointing this out to Connor and Ted today. It's very subtle, but we often talk about we want to see relative strength confirm a breakout to new highs on the charts. But if you take a look here at this low and you take a look here, at this low, the relative strength is just keeping up with what's going on with the uh, S&P 500. So this means that we're not underperforming on the NASDAQ 100 relative to the S&P. Worst case, we're right uh, in sync with it. So now we've gone from the NASDAQ 100 being, let's go to track price, being uh, ridiculously overbought, 9% and at the high, back over here we were 11 to 12 percent above the 50-day moving average and prices just at the same place and flat fast forward above one two three four five six seven seven and a half weeks prices at the same place but now we're bouncing at the 50-day moving average an, an o'neill buy signal is uh a first time of visit during an uptrend to the 50-day moving average and this applies to stocks as as well as indexes first visit is normally a buying opportunity and if nothing else you buy there you've got a very easy stop out in case the market breaks down so uh happy to see the bounce at the 50-day slash 10-week moving average let's go to mdy mid caps yes it closed below the 21 just barely by a, a tenth of a percent but note the hammer there also another situation we gap down closed at the high let's go to small caps gap down closed at the high right below the 21 day moving average so uh another inflection point today today's lows should be referenced for any stock or index or etf or uh, whatever you own, because it was a, a situation where stocks have been going down for the last week and a half, and it looks like they may have, at least today, shown signs of a short-term bottom. We want to see this confirm the move back above the 21 and above the ADMA uh, to give us more confidence in what's going on with the market. <clears throat> Something else confirmed uh, our optimism today. The VIX gapped up. But if you look at a short term chart of the VIX, the VIX sold off all afternoon while the market was advancing. So we got confirmation for the, from the VIX of what was going on uh, with stocks. Let's go to the dollar. Uh, dollar gapped up, closed at the lows of the day. This is more confirmation in what we would want to see by stocks because we would want to see a dollar coming down. A weaker dollar is better for stocks. And we saw that also. Uh, how did that weaker dollar translate over to commodities? Not so much today. Gold making a lower low down six tenths of a percent. Gold stocks, GDX, down 0.85%, but at least putting in a hammer with the rest of uh, uh, the, the overall market. And silver, SLV, uh, down 1.5%, making uh, lower lows. Uh, so let's take a look at CopEx, Dr. Copper, uh, really quickly. That's Copper Miners. They gap down also, uh, but put in a hammer. CPER, this is the actual price of copper, gapping down, but at least closing at uh, the highs of the day. These base metals, when China's weak, it's seen as an economic weakness, and it's supposed to flow through to commodities, and commodities were weak today. Uh, but hey, oil finished finished positive by the end of the day after being negative uh, all day long, and at least you're putting in a hammer uh, in copper. Where are we next? Okay, let's go to Bitcoin, BITO, uh, up three percent on the day, uh, maybe because of the the downgrade in the banks. We never know for sure, but you do see uh, Bitcoin zigging when uh, financials are zagging. But anyway, Bitcoin trying to put in a low gapping up above this little five-day consolidation here that looks like it's trying to put in a bottom and you can see the stochastic hooking up from oversold uh, on the daily let's go to bonds now the prices were up all day which means we're giving back some of the yield that's a positive for stocks also uh, you can see the hookup from oversold in the broad broad bond index 
How about TLT, the long bond index also up, did close at the lows of the day, but hooking up from oversold also. Let's go to the long bond yield, TYX. Uh, so where are we now? We had two big days up. We bounced, we've given back about half of that move. Uh, it did close at the, yield did close at the high of the day, but, um, and bouncing at the ADMA, but we'll, we'll just have to keep an eye on it. We are also, uh, yields are just the opposite of what the price is. Uh, the price is oversold. Yields are showing us overbought on the stochastic 10-year also. Uh, was below 4%. Uh, crawled back above it by uh, the end of the day. But um, So while rates were rising, the market was rising too. So the market at least was shrugging that off uh, today. All right, that's all of our inner asset correlation. Let's go to the tail of the tape now. Uh, VIX at 16, uh, still above the 21. We want that to come down, obviously, a little bit more. The news, China trade below expectations, hit commodities, uh, and Moody's cut regional banks. We already talked about that. The day count from up one to down one, but with a positive divergence with it being a hammer, uh, it's not as bad a down day as you normally would get. Five days below the ADMA, back to one day below the 21 EMA. Expectation short-term negative if we're below the 21. We are. We did uh, break below the 21 on both the S&P uh, and the NASDAQ, but with a hammer. So again, some cause for optimism. We need follow-through on that optimism. Gap down two-hour base and then trend up in the afternoon uh, was the interday action. Uh, XLU and V were the only two sectors that were positive out of the spider sectors, biotech positive. Here's oils with the initial big gap down, closing positive by the end of the day. On the other hand, KRE negative, but again, closing at the high of the day, gold and silver, semiconductors, IGV, cloud stocks, and emerging markets. Because China was weak is why EEM, emerging markets were weak. IGV and cloud were weak because of the next chart I'm gonna show you, uh, and semiconductors uh, weak also. So here's our non-owned focus list in-house. We bought QLD on that bounce. I've given many reasons why it was a low risk entry in this video. So off the 10 week, uh, we bought a QLD position. After hours, we sold uh, SMCI. Uh, so basically minor uptick in our adjusted beta. We're looking to add more if we get follow through strength. Bottom line for today, red close, but bulls again by the dip at support in the afternoon. So why were cloud stocks hit so hard today? Let's go to the first chart I'm going to show you. And it's data dog and nasty re, uh, response to earnings uh, down 17.2% on the day. It was worse. Uh, cold comfort putting in a hammer on a day like today on 530% above average volume, but data dog very much uh, off the leaders list as it's a broken stock now. And this trickled through uh, to quite a few other cloud stocks also, which is why CLOU, the cloud ETF, undercut closed right on the 50 day moving average, but uh, not showing relative strength. Uh, maybe it's a bottom, maybe it's not, uh, but you know, Datadog certainly is crossed off and then you can check the charts of what other cloud stocks to see their various uh, states of decline based on what we saw here today. But you can see this looks like a panic or a some sort of a short-term climax here with this abandoned baby on the cloud index here. Uh, and then we've sold off in keeping with what's been going on in the overall market in tech stocks. Okay, let's go to SMCI very quickly. Uh, great stock. We booked multiple gains uh, in this along the way. The, lot, the prior sell was 319 last week, taking some off when it moved below the ADMA. I've talked about, uh, you know, when you get a trend above the ADMA and it starts to show weakness, best course to take some off. Made a fool out of me going up to closing at 347 today, but again, after hours now down uh, around 310, which is below the 21 day exponential moving average. We exited around 303. Uh, let's see what else do we want to go through? Okay, Datadog, what else was down in sympathy with that? Uh, MDB, ugly day and closing at the lows. No uh, afternoon buying from MongoDB. We got stopped on this around 404, 
back on here when it was undercutting the 21 day moving average. Uh, watched it go higher a after the buy a couple times, considered getting it back in. Uh, happy that we didn't also, but uh, down 7% on the day on 54% average volume. This is this breaks the pattern also. Um, best you can hope for is a uh, reclaim of this on it by, by the uh, close of the week. Uh, another uh, stock that reported earnings and didn't have a good reaction initially was UPS, ended up only down a percent by the end of the day, gap down 5% at the open and uh, buyers came in. They also reduced guidance going forward too, uh, blamed it a bit on union related costs, uh, but UPS, glad to see it cut its losses. Uh, Palantir, this reported yesterday, bounced at the 50 day. This was all over the place uh, after the close from down teens to positive. Uh, bounced at the 50 day moving average. That's a support area. That 16 level failed uh, at 21 on the move back up. See if it can regain the 21 and reclaim itself as a leader. As it did report earnings, did have good numbers. Sales numbers isn't great at 13%. Uh, the earnings pretty good with a the bounce there. We'll see how this uh, plays out going forward. Okay, Lily, two on the plus side, one from earnings, LLY, relative strength, new high, the, the blue ball confirming the price, confirming the price action, 500% above average volume for Lily, up 15% on the day. Uh, great earnings and a great outlook, but this also got a boost from NVO. Lily's weight loss drug is... Um, is initially intended for diabetes, but it's work, working as a weight loss drug. NVO's uh, diabetes drug also working as a weight loss drug, and they just showed uh, trial results that it cut cardiovascular events by 20%, and as a result, it was up 17% on the day on 630% volume. So a possible another revenue source for Novo with this drug, Wigovi, uh, and another a thought on this is that, uh, you know, in will insurance uh, companies have been balking at covering it because of the price and it was just on weight loss, they'll tell you you could diet and exercise. But if it's reducing cardiovascular events also, uh, that may put some pressure on them to uh, do uh, reimbursement for it. So that's one school of thought there anyway. But the bottom line up 630%, up 17% on the day, that's NVO. Uh, moving along, DraftKings got an update or, or an upgrade, DKNG. Uh, not the best close, uh, but it is one of the leaders holding on to the 21. It's in the 2121 list. FCX, positive. Uh, th this is the hammer uh, that we talked about with commodities. Undercut the 21, closed strong, closed at the high of the day. Reclaiming the 21. Uh, TDW, this is a 2121 name, had a gap down on earnings and a very strong close. Uh, nice earnings and sales numbers ended up positive on the day after a big gap down on 130% above average volume. Uh, that also filtered over to other oil stocks. NE Noble bounced off the 21, looking good there. LNG, Nat Gas uh, bounced off the 21 there also. And uh, one that we're watching for tomorrow, VRT, they um, did an offering, the offering priced at 34.21, it closed at 36.22. So volume will spike tomorrow on the offering. Uh, we're keeping an eye, this is a presenting as a potential leader, uh, components to data centers, data center growth is huge, network and components and chips. Uh, because of the AI uh, craze. So we're keeping an eye on VRT to see how it acts tomorrow uh, after the offering. And let's see, that is it. That is gonna cover it. As always, love to hear from you. Got uh, an interesting letter. And you know, I've been asking people to like the video on YouTube. Somebody told me they require you to log in in order to do that. Well, whether or not you're going to log in to like it is completely up to you, but you know where I stand on it. So um, we would appreciate it. Uh, these videos are getting more and more popular. We're very proud of that. We get a lot of good uh, comments. One person told me this is the only video they have to have to actually have to listen to now to find out everything that's going on, not just in the headlines, but under the hood in the market. And that's 
what we're striving for here at Revere. So reach out with any comments. You can either put them on the YouTube page or email Don at RevereAsset.com or my partner, Dan Stewart, Dan at RevereAsset.com. Phone is 855-REAL-WEALTH. That's 855-732-5932. The end of July, I wrapped up one solid year of doing a video every night after the close. Uh, plus our weekend podcast. We're here for you here at Revere. And please tell your friends and tell your family uh, to spread the word that you don't have to be a slave to the market. Our flagship portfolio, as I said, grow tech. And we want to grow assets in an uptrending market, protect them in a downtrending market. We want to take what the market's going to give us, but we fight like hell to keep from giving back when the market is in the taking mood. And that's what we've been discussing uh, over the last couple of weeks, lightening up our portfolios during this pullback. Uh, but hey, maybe we just put in the bottom with the hammer today at support and at the 10 week moving average. The bulls certainly would like to see that and we'll see what tomorrow is going to bring for us. So with that, I'm going to wrap up because remember, it's not how much you make in the market. It's how much of that you can keep. And with that, I'll wrap up the video for Tuesday, August 8th. This is Donovan and board with Revere Asset telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great day.